Total destruction of force few buildings could have withstood. That's the way emergency management officials described Jones Valley School demolished by the tornado November 15th. As Adrian Gibson reports, what happened is considered a vivid illustration of why schools should be built extra strong. I would almost rebuild it where, it, you know, where it, if it hit one end of it might go, but the rest of it might be spared. These state and local officials today got their first close-up look at the destroyed Jones Valley School. A look in the hallways of the buildings shows mounds of debris, including heavy concrete blocks and steel support beams. Kids in schools are advised to go to hallways for protection against tornadoes, but this building would not have given them that protection. Well, this is an older school and the structure of it is, uh, would not be to meet the current codes. Uh, schools constructed later than this one was do meet the current codes. School officials will rebuild Jones Valley School. School System Director of Support Services, Dr. Lee Gradford, says it will be stronger. I'm certain that when we rebuild this school, that it will contain uh, a lot more safety than what this one had. Federal and state officials who have investigated this tornado of two weeks ago say all that could be done was done to protect the people in this school and other parts of the community. But they say once the school is built back, it will give even more protection than this old one afforded. The insurance industry says the damage assessment for insured property in Madison County and Morgan County is $135 million. The Insurance Information Institute says the Huntsville area lost $95.4 million in the twister. The remainder of the $135 million was in hail damage in Morgan County. You know, I've lived in Huntsville since 1958, 31 years, and have been with Channel 31 since 1963. It's a long time. I was also here during the 74 tornadoes that really ripped up the valley badly as well as the more recent uh, 85 ice storms uh, that created so many problems. And during this recent series of events uh, with the tornadoes of uh, November 15th, um, once again I was able to see uh, firsthand and up close what it's like for both a TV station staff as well as the citizens of the valley to work under extreme pressure in a time where it really mattered and it really counted. In all those years, I don't think I've ever seen a television staff pull together more cohesively than the Channel 31 staff did. Everyone did everything they could do, and they did it well. And I was pleased with the efforts that our staff uh, presented and the um, help they were able to give uh, people when they needed it on the air. And then beyond that, the citizens of the area, uh, beginning right after the tornado hit, shortly after 4.30 that afternoon, right on through the rest of the night, volunteers, workers, um, even, even friends and relatives, and, and those who were complete strangers, helping everyone they could help, much of which you've seen on this two-hour presentation that's, that you've been watching all this time. And I certainly am pleased and, and particularly um, thankful, I suppose, for all of the feelings, all of the efforts, uh, and all of the spirit that was so well demonstrated uh, during these tragic events. And at Way TV, we hope this special video presentation will serve as a perpetual reminder of our commitment to be there when you need us. Joining me now is our news director, Cliff Wyndham. Cliff? Thanks, MD. I think MD has expressed many of the same sentiments that I would offer. What you've just seen is Channel 31's collective news accounts of a tragedy of the greatest proportions. Who could have ever imagined that any of us would have been challenged to respond in ways we never thought possible? Yet even in the midst of turmoil of that dark moment in our history, each member of the 31 Eyewitness News staff and Way TV endeavored to bring you the story as it unfolded. Our objective was simply to help us all make better sense of a situation that seemingly defied all logic. As a result, we were able to record for all time our struggle to remain and regain order in our lives and indeed triumph over adversity. Tragedy, turmoil, and triumph. We've seen it all. It should be clearly evident that the spirit of Huntsville, Alabama and the Tennessee Valley has not been broken by the tornado of 89. Some dreams have been shattered, but new dreams will replace them as we rebuild and climb to even greater heights. Now. I'd like to introduce the mayor of Huntsville, the Honorable Steve Hedinger. The night of November the 15th was the worst tragedy ever to hit the city of Huntsville. 
but I cannot say enough about the actions of those involved in the rescue efforts and the cooperation between all levels of government and across our many departments within the city as they all work together to restore calm after this major storm. As unfortunate as this tragedy was, it pulled the citizens of Huntsville together and it made me so proud to be a part of this community. I also would like to thank the members of the media, particularly the local media and Channel 31 for their efforts to keep the city up to date on the night of the tragedy and the days which followed. It'll be years before Huntsville looks the same as it did before November the 15th, but I know that'll happen. I grieve with those who lost loved ones, those who were injured, those who lost property, and I thank the many thousands of others who offered their help and support to pull Huntsville through. Larry F. Ammerman, Corey Renee Bentley, James Russell Black, Della Mae Buford, Godwin Chee, Alan Dale Cruz, Thomas Payne Fry, Vanessa Hastings Poole, Audrey L. Burford, Karen E. Jones, Scott Leslie Kozelski, John and Wanda Lewis, Karen and Jennifer Luker, Louise McCord, Mary Elizabeth Mahaffey, James Burr, Schumann Powell. We are to begin to accept what happened as real and honor these 18 people because they are no longer with us and all we have of them is the gift of their memory. When the clock stopped at gate cleaners, the husband turned to his wife and said the most profound words any of us will ever hear. I love you. And the clock stopped. They were in the sanctuary at just prior to this time that the storm struck one of our associates uh, as a Hensley volunteer and heard on his radio that the storm had hit out the arsenal. He rushed around to the sanctuary. They were able to get into our little bitty basement. Meet Jonathan Lipp, a normal fourth grader at a normal day at school. Two weeks ago, there was nothing normal about Jonathan's life. He was practicing with his handbells when the tornado struck. It's not likely he will ever be the same again. I'm glad that I'm gonna get to see this Christmas. I'm probably gonna give more than take more. Jonathan's parents say there are times when the reality of the horror of that night makes the young boy cry. However, yeah. they don't believe any long-term effects will scar him. And to see those children up there playing those handbells on Wednesday uh, just, um, I think, inspired us all that we can continue to do what we've been doing and to have a better awareness of, of um, that life is precious. <laughs>